hey what up people this is fred and you're welcome to my youtube channel okay so real quick we're going to be looking at now i want to explain a few things okay um the family of trochoid all right uh trochoid is a special curve all right so now i want to um, explain a few things now in this video we're going to be discussing i'm going to be showing you how to construct really um an inferior trochoid and um, a superior trochoid but before then let me explain now i want to explain cycloid epicycloid hypocycloid then i'll go ahead to explain trochoid um that's inferior trochoid and uh, superior trochoid now if you have a circle and you have a plane surface okay a plane surface like let's assume this is my surface and you have a circle on that surface and there is a dot let's call those dots here this point p now uh, notice that the point p is located at the circumference of the circle just any point on the circumference here now if this circle roll along this plane like this if it rolls all right one revolution back here all right where the dot is now the path this dot is going to trace is called a cycloid all right that is along a horizontal line now i have um, already explained i've already uploaded videos on how to construct cycloid you can you can go check it out now the next thing i'm going to talk about is epicycloid and hypocycloid all right now for epicycloid now if you have a circle okay now you know initially the, uh, sorry the other time we talked about a straight uh, a circle rolling along a straight line along a straight line now this time around we are having a circle rolling on the outer circumference of what a bigger circle so this is actually a bigger circle or an arc if you like all right now it's no longer rolling along what a straight line but instead on a curve now this curve has what an outer surface and what an inner surface now if the circle rolls one revolution assuming this is your point p again so if it rolls rolls along this outer surface one revolution like this that's not quite perfect but um it's just for the explanation of what an epicycloid is so the path traced by this dot on this circle after rolling one revolution is called an epicycloid because it is outside what the arc the bigger arc epicycloid now if you have the circle on the inside instead of the outer surface now it's on the what the inner surface of that arc okay and here is your dot p and it rolls that's not perfect but just try and follow me one revolution till the dot is back the path traced by this dot is called what and sorry it's called a hypocycloid why because it is rolling on the inner part of the what of the circumference not the outer if it rolls on the outer it is called what an epicycloid now um let's not talk about what we're about to do on this video which is what um inferior trochoid and superior trochoid all right now now also remember uh, i think you should know that i've also done a video on epicycloid and hypocycloid you can go check the videos out okay now this video is strictly um for inferior trochoid and superior trochoid now here we go again now here's the plane surface the ruler here is my plane surface all right yeah so now the other time we had a dot on the circumference of the circle somewhere just anywhere on the circumference of the circle and it rolled but now the dot is no longer on the circumference now we are having a string whereby the dot is what outside the circle now this is the what the circle the dot is outside somewhere that distance you understand and now if the circle rolls one revolution one revolution and back like this the path traced by this dot here which is our p okay the path traced is called what um a superior superior trochoid all right superior trochoid that's it now it is possible for us to have the dot on the inside somewhere here on the circle not outside not on the circumference now but on the inside all right so let's see a situation like that all right now this is a situation here by the circle it's neither out sorry the dot p remember this is our dot p it's neither outside the circle nor on the circumference of the circle but inside somewhere just some few distance from the circumference inside here 
Now, when it rolls along a straight path like this, one revolution and back, the path traced by this dot is called what? An inferior trochoid. Inferior trochoid. So, this video uh, is going to center basically on trochoid, um, and that's superior trochoid and um, inferior trochoid. So, let's start with superior trochoid. All right, now here is a typical um, superior trochoid question. Now, the question says, a circle rolls along the plane XY, all right? So, find um, or draw the profile of the point P after one word revolution, all right? So, now, parameters have been given. CA, which happens to be the radius of the circle, is 25, while CP is what, 40, all right? So it's very, very, very simple. Now what you do is you stretch the CP to draw a circle. Now listen very, very carefully. While drawing a superior trochoid, be very, very careful because we're going to be having two circles. We're going to draw the first circle for the radius of the circle and we're going to draw the second circle for P. So we're going to stretch P and using C as same center, we'll draw another circle, you understand? But pay attention. When you're drawing it, this line you're seeing here, CP, will be a thick line. This horizontal XY line will be thick line. This circle will be thick line. But the other circle we are going to draw, that is the one that will take the radius of CP, will be thin lines. Every other will be thin line. Okay? Um, apart from the curve at the end of the day. So please take note of that. All right. All right. So what I did here is CA is 25. I stretched 25 on my ruler. All right. I stretched 25 and I needled here and I describe the circle then C P is 40 so I stretched 40 40 on my okay that's it 40 on my ruler and I need it on same center and I drew this one now take note this circle is thick while this one is thin all right so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to draw the diameter of the circles then I'm just going to draw it out because I'm going to make use of the extension. All right. So I place my ruler, every other thin, thin line. Don't forget. So I will draw a line out like that. I hope you can see that clearly. Good. Now what I will do next is I will divide this circle. Any, just any one of them, okay? I will divide them into what? 12 equal parts. And you know exactly how to do that. Okay, so... I have divided into 12 equal parts. Uh, if you don't know how to divide a circle into 12 equal parts, check previous videos on uh, special curves like um, cycloid, epicycloid. Um, I think um, I explained how to do that just to keep this video short. Okay, now, now notice that I have already drawn this, okay? And I've already drawn the circle for this path of uh, P. All right, now, you notice that this is what a thick line. Then this crank here, this crank C, here is A. And this is P. So this crank CP here is also a thick line. Then what's left is the horizontal line through which it will roll. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer this line, horizontal line here. So you align your set square like this. Support with your ruler. Now move it to A because that is where um, the circle touches or the horizontal line. Now draw this line. Draw it thick line. All right. Draw it thick line. I'm going to extend it. That's it. Now, it is on the surface. This line, if you like it, okay, X, Y, that our line, this circle is going to roll. All right? So, focus on this line. All right? Now, what we're going to do next is, now, you could um, calculate the circumference of this circle, all right, and measure uh, whatever your answer is, all right, you uh, measure it, use your ruler, okay, to indicate the measurement on along this line, okay, along this line. So, but there is another quicker and um, approximate method you can make use of. So, what you do is just take any of the division, you know these divisions here? They are all equal. Each of these divisions, they are all equal. So just pick anyone, say from here to here. 
All right, good. Anyone, they are all the same. And step off 12 equal division. Why? Because I divided this circle into 12. Now, don't make this is the mistake that most students they make. They pick um, this division here and they come over here to step off 12 division. No, that is wrong. Why? Because you, this circle is rolling on this surface. This is not the circle that is rolling in the real sense. It is this one. So you have to use the division of this particular circle to step off. Don't use this. The division of this bigger circle to step off. So take note of that. Then you need to here. You step one, two, three. You keep going until you get to 12, four. Okay, so after stepping off 12 division, I have labeled it zero, one, two, three, four, five. Now also take note that I labeled the outer circle. That is the part traced uh, by P. I'm talking about the radius CP. I didn't label this circle here, no. I have to label this circle. Why? Because the locus that I'm looking for is on this circle, that is CP. Alright? So that is why I labeled it. Because uh, I'm going to have my C1 to C12 also at the center. And um, as we proceed, you will get to understand the reason. Okay, so next is align your set square with... Um, we are going to draw lines, okay? Through 11-1, 10-2. 9, 3 has already been drawn. 8, 4, 7, 6, and 6. So we're going to um, align with this center line here. Line your set square properly. Then you transfer to P first. Remember, all of these are thin lines. Draw a thin line. Transfer to 1, 11. Draw a thin line. 10, 2. Connect them. Just a minute. Okay, so this is what you do. Alright? So you transfer lines. I want to keep this video short, so I just decided to pause and do the rest. So you transfer here to this point. That is um, 1 and 11. And you connect. Sorry. So you keep transferring like that, 10 and 2, 3, 9 has already been drawn, you transfer to 8. So 8 and 4 they will connect, 7 and 5 will connect, 6 there. So after doing that, now take note, because um, this is another mistake most students make. Now instead of connecting this line, this 11 and 12, what they do is, they will connect this one here. Okay, let's say this one is 1 prime, 11 prime, 2 prime, 10 prime. So they will, they will connect this, no, it is wrong. Don't connect these points. This is what I mean. Don't connect this or this or this, this and that. No, because it is what superior trochoid. So you focus on your P. So the circle that forms what the path CP. That's what you will connect. All right. So what you do next is this vertical line here transfer to one, two, three to twelve. So you align your set square like this. You transfer to one. Sorry about that. Transfer to one. Draw a thin line from the top to the from the top here to the bottom or from the bottom to the top. There you two. Three. Four. Until you get to twelve. Alright. So now I have transferred all vertical lines to 12 remember to draw the lines across until you get to this bottom line here good and also take note of my thick lines only every other thing is thin line now what you do next is you stretch cp cp is 40 it's either you stretch 40 on your on your ruler or you just come over here and stretch cp it's the same thing okay so there you have it cp now you keep cp fixed all right now, this is your CP. Now, this is your AP, sorry, your super, your superior, rather, your superior trochoid will start from here at O, all right? And will end at 12 here. Okay? So, you start stepping off. So, with this CP or 40, when it was, when you needle on CO, definitely that's O. Then you now move to C1. 
this point of intersection, this center. So you call all these centers C1, C2 to C12. All right, just label them C O C1, C2 to C12. Now what you need to do here on C2. All right. Now you now check line. Um. Okay. So this is one. This is two. And this is three. This is four. Okay. So you need. Sorry. This is C1. Uh, it's looking like two really okay c1 so you cut line one now don't cut on this side now remember this is line one why you can see one here so one and eleven they are going through the same what line so i can refer to this one as one and eleven at the same time so this one is line 10 and 2 at the same time so if you need it on one cut the particular line okay that is one so this is line one also so you cut like this cut the line and you have your dot here Point of intersection then move to two all right so when you needle on two you cut line two so this is 10 to line 10 to i hope you can see that clearly line 10 to so you cut this line here remember these are what cp 40 that's the point of intersection all right so you move towards c3 Remember, not the circle, but this straight line where it is intersecting the horizontal line. So, three, where is line three? This is nine three. This line is line nine three. You can see three here. You can see nine here. So, you cut the line there. You continue like that. You move to C4. This is line 4. Horizontal line 4. You cut 4. You move to 5. This is line 5, as you can see. Cut line 5. Then 6 will definitely be at the top there. So, let me bore this point I've already cut. And that is um, 5. This is 6. Now, 7. As you're moving to 7, remember... I've been moving my my pair of compass like this. You keep you continue like that until you finish up. Now, when you needle on seven, you look for line seven. Sorry about that. Seven. Now this is line seven. Also, you can see five and seven. They are on the same line. So line seven. Now don't make the mistake of cutting like seven like this. No, you move your hand this way. Cut line seven. Then you go to eight. Center eight. This is line four eight. So it's the same thing as eight. Line 8, cut. C9, you need to there. This is, the center line is C9. You cut this line here. Then 10. Where is line 10? I have to extend this line, 10. This is 10, 2. I have to extend this line. So let me just put it there. I will extend it later. Okay, let me just do it now. Okay, so I have this here. Okay, I guess this is um, 10, then 11. You needle on 11 and you cut line 11. Then 12 is already here. Right? So. Okay, so what you should do next is you get um, a French curve, or a flexible curve, or a broomstick. For me, I love to use a broomstick, all right? And uh, join the curve, so I will do that real quick. Okay, so there you are. Here is your superior trochoid. So that's it, your superior trochoid. So the next one we're going to look at now is inferior trochoid okay so here's an example of an inferior trochoid um, question so this circle rolls along what the plane xy all right draw um the profile of the point p after more revolution okay now you'll be given cp to be what 24 and you'll be given the radius of this circle to be what 42 all right so with these two parameters use it to construct 
the circle and locate the point P. Okay, so here we have it. So what I did was, um, the radius of this circle is 42. So I stretched 42 on my ruler. 42, that is 4.2. And I described the circle. Now, once again, notice that this circle, this one, outer one, is thick. Remember, the circle that is rolling is always thick. Just like we saw in superior trochoid, okay? So it's thick. Then this distance here, CP, is given to be what? 24. So I stretch 24 on my ruler. And I need it here, and I what? I drew this other circle here. So what I did was that I joined the diameter first. So I joined the diameter, all right? Then I dropped a perpendicular at the center here, C. All right? To divide the circle into four equal, equal parts. So I dropped a perpendicular here, and I extended it down. Then I measured, because of course, it has been measured by this um, virtue of drawing the circle. So the CP, so I just drew this with thick line and I indicated the P. So please don't forget to uh, take note of um, all these um, details while drawing. All right, so what you do next is you divide the circle into what, 12 equal parts again. Okay, so I have divided it into 12 equal parts. Then once again, notice, this is what's um, um, carrying the numbers. This crank, CP here, the circle, for this crank, that's what's carrying the numbers 1 to 12, not this one that is rolling. No, I told you uh, for superior trochoid, it is the crank that will be carrying the word the numbers. That's another mistake that uh, most students they make, so you might want to avoid that mistake. So, this one that's carrying the number. Now, remember, this is what's rolling, this bigger circle, that's what's rolling according to the question. All right, so I'm going to transfer horizontal line. Uh, to give me that plane surface, so I'm going to align here, align your set square with this center line here, and transfer to this point here, and draw a thick horizontal line. So that is the surface upon which this circle will roll. All right, so I'm just going to extend it a little bit to the end. All right, good. Now, what you do next is you stretch any of these divisions, this circle that is rolling. Remember, don't stretch this one. It is wrong. Then you come and step off. No. This is the one you stretch. I told you the circle that is rolling, that's what you stretch. And I also showed you, I, I explained another method. You look for the circumference, the circumference of this bigger circle. Whatever you get, you mark it off on this sort, horizontal line. Whatever it stop, you divide it into 12 equal parts, and that's it. But there is an approximate method way of doing that, and that's by just dividing the circle into 12. Then you stretch one of them, one of the divisions. Once you stretch one of the divisions, you're okay. Then step off 12. Remember, we're not stepping it off on this. No, why? Because this is what's rolling. So here, that is one. That's two. You keep going until... 3, you get to 12, that's 4, okay, so there we have it, 0 to 12, now what you do next is you draw lines, now this time around, remember we are not drawing through uh, the intersecting points of this bigger circle, no, now it is this small, why, because this is the crank, it is always the path that is being traced, that is the crank, the circle that forms that path, that is what you connect, so we are going to connect 11, 1, 10, 2, 9, 3 is already drawn, 8, 4, 7, 5, and 6. That's all. So don't make the mistake of connecting this, this one through this, this through this, and that. No, 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 no. It is wrong. All right, so I will align my set square with any of the horizontal lines, any one. So, okay, let me adjust properly. There. Okay, connect 10 and 2. 10 and 2, connect 11 and 1, 11 and 1, you connect 0, these are thin lines please, you connect 8 and 4, connect 7 and 5, connect 6 or draw 6, okay, we don't have need for this part because the inferior trochoid will just 
be within this path. So I'm going to extend this line. When I'm done extending them, then I will drop this perpendicular line here. So align with this. You transfer to one, draw a thin line up there, two. three up to 12 okay so there we have it so i've drawn all of these vertical lines all right and you knew how exactly how i did i transfer them then um i labeled you no know, this is c so this becomes co because this is o all right c1 c2 c3 c4 to c12 okay so what i'll do next is i'll, I'll trace the points so P is definitely going to start here from 0 and it's going to end at this point here, 12. Don't forget that. All right? So I'll look for other points. So you stretch, stretch CP. Or just stretch 24 on your ruler. It's the same thing. So this is what? PO. All right? First point. Then I'll now move to C1. This is C1. Don't forget the line that intersects this vertical line. Uh, where this horizontal line is intersecting, I mean 9-3, intersecting the vertical, that's the point. So this is C1. So I will what, cut line 1. So where is line 1? This definitely is line 1. This line here. Um, I hope you can see that. This line. This is 11-1. So I'll cut this line, horizontal line. Don't cut from this side. No. Cut it from this other side here. So that's it there. Sorry about this. That's for one. Then I'll now move my um, pair of compass to C2, center 2. So this is 10 to line 10. To, so I'll cut the Remember, it is the horizontal line I'm cutting. So you cut the horizontal line, and that's it there. So I'll move it to center. Okay, I'm done with two. Center three. I hope you can see that clearly. And. Um, I will cut 9 and 3. That's line 3. There. Center 4. Remember, this is fixed at CP. That is 24. So, center 4. This is line 8 and 4. They are on the same line. So, line 4. Then I'll move to center 5. And this is line 5. That is 7 and 5. Cut line 5. So I have it there. For 6. 6 is already on the top. No need. Then for 7. Remember 6. This is line 6. Then 7. 7 and 5 down the same line. So this is line 7. Now don't cut like this. Don't cut like this. No. 7. Move to your right. This way. That's 7. 8. This is line 8 and 4. I hope you can see that. Let me adjust. So that's 8, cut line 8. This is line 8. 9. It's on the horizontal line, 9. Then 10. Center 10. Um, this is line 10. Yeah. Then 11. This is line 11 and 12 has already been noted. So you ball all of these points. Okay, so you make a dot on all the points of intersection. So you will see that path. All right. So you use the French curve or flexible broomstick to connect. And what you have is called an inferior trochoid. Okay, so there you have your inferior trochoid so sorry yes that's it inferior so inferior trochoid all right so that's it um by now you should know how to construct a superior trochoid and an inferior trochoid and also tell the difference between uh, a superior trochoid inferior trochoid epicycloid hypocycloid and a cycloid all of these videos uh on my youtube channel you can go check them out all right thanks for watching and um if you haven't subscribed to the channel this channel please do so 
and um as more videos will be uploaded as time goes on all right so don't forget this is a thick line this is what a thick line this curve is a thick line every other thing is thin line have a nice day